Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. This week I'm at BlazeAid in Forbes and they've asked me to review and demonstrate these recycled plastic fence posts that are made by Plastic Forests Australia. These particular posts were donated to BlazeAid by a private company and this review isn't sponsored or influenced by Plastic Forests in any way. So to start, the pickets are supplied in pallets of 210 posts and since each of these pallets weighs around 530 kilos, that's about two and a half kilos or five pounds per post. They cost about $17 each, which is about the same price as two regular steel star pickets. Now it's fair enough if that price takes them off your menu, but they might still be useful in certain environments, like if you've got a fence across a salt pan, or in a wet area where the star pickets rust very quickly. The entire post is made out of a solid block of plastic, and according to Plastic Forest website, it's made out of recycled consumer soft plastics, so that'll be chopping bags and the like. They claim to be UV stabilised, termite proof, rotten mould resistant, which all makes perfect sense given what they're made out of. They have this strong tapered point which lets you drive them into the ground using either a manual or a petrol driven post driver. But since they're made from plastic, they don't have the strength in the point to punch through rocks or tree roots the way a steel post will. If you try and do that, the point will just end up pancaked like this. If you are planning to use them in rocky ground, you can drill a pilot hole using a long one inch masonry bit first. The point's strong enough to expand a hole, just not strong enough to punch it in the first place. We've discovered that you can remove these pickets using a claw type post lifter, but you may need some kind of wedge inside one jaw of the lifter to give it a nice firm grip on the post. These pickets are the 1800 mm or six foot version and they come pre-drilled with 14 holes. The holes are a little bit smaller than what you'd find in a steel star picket, but standard fencing wire sizes will still slide easily through them. Obviously you can also use the holes to support twitch wires if you're planning to attach barbed wire to the posts. We've performed an experimental installation on 380 metres of fence, here at Forbes. The property belongs to Jim and Donna, and the area we'll be working on is a river flat, which gets flooded on a fairly regular basis. Being a river flat, it's almost totally free of rocks, and the trees were cleared from this area about 100 years ago, so this is pretty much ideal ground for driving the pickets in without pre-drilling any pilot holes. The original fence was a standard star picket, plain wire and ring lock fence with a 5 metre post spacing. The 2022 flood finally damaged that fence beyond repair, so Jim and Donna have asked Blaze Aid to replace it with a two wire electric fence using these plastic pickets on a 10 metre spacing. Across the whole 380 metres, we only had one post that needed to be removed because we hit an obstruction. We just moved it about 300 millimetres down the line and it then drove in fine. We also had a second post that we had to pull out because we lost our concentration for a moment and oriented its holes the wrong way round. Our BlazeAid team cleared the old fence away on January 4th and we erected the new fence on January 5. We're going to be attaching the hot wires to the posts using wire twitches. We can do this because the plastic post is 100% insulator. This method also makes it easy to add extra pickets if the post spacing turns out to be too wide, or to adjust the spacing of the hot wires if we need to. The pickets turned out to be a bit bendier than we expected, so if we were doing it again, we'd probably reduce the post spacing to about six meters. And if this was a barbed wire fence rather than electric, we'd probably use a steel or wooden post with four or five of the plastic pickets in between. We'll come back in about a year and see how that fence worked out for Jim and Donna. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a loud studio audience.